What might you see at Red Slave? Eagle rays, seahorses, blue parrotfish, kissing hermit crabs, queen triggerfish, squid, turtles, stingrays, lobsters, crabs, palamettas, barracudas, and senates. Want more? Keep watching. Red Slave is named for the small huts where slaves lived while working in the salt production process in the 1800s. The now yellow huts were built in 1850 and are both an important reminder of Bonaire's history and a popular stop on island tours. They are interesting to explore during a surface interval, as is the much larger house where the overseer stayed. We haven't been able to find out what these ruins in front are, but if you can point us in a direction for additional research, leave a comment below. In between the house and the huts is a very tall orange obelisk. It's over 30 feet high and one of four on the island that were once used to let cargo ships know where to set anchor in preparation for loading the salt. There are also a couple of columns, or turrets, right at the edge of the coast. As far as nature goes, we've seen flocks of flamingos flying around, and a few just hanging out in the salt pans across the street. Pelicans patrol the coast looking for a shallow meal in the water, while lizards do the same on land. We even came across a few donkeys on our way back from some of the night dives. There are some interesting flowers, and patches of greenery dot the rock and coral debris landscape. We haven't seen snorkelers here, that's not to say they don't come, but they're scarce if they do. Perhaps making the long drive without knowing the surface conditions is a factor. In any case, the shallows are a wonderful mix of gorgonians and short corals to the south, and long sandy areas to the north with plenty of creatures to watch. As far as the diving, we continue to get first-time captures at every site. Red Slave had this ulema, and some encrusting zoanthid. Other highlights include a few long-snout seahorses, a juvenile arrow squid, and a post-larval surgeonfish. The sea life section in this video will have longer clips, but if you want to learn more about the uncommon animals shown here, or more about the slave huts, check out the description below for links to additional information. Before going any further, we now have more than 2,000 subscribers. Yay! Thank you so much if you're one of them. If you're not, and you're enjoying this video, why not give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing yourself, and hit the bell to get notified when our next video comes out. Help us get to 3,000! Thanks! Adorable smiley face. Red Slave is the southernmost shore dive site on Bonaire's leeward side. As such, it's the longest drive at 9.2 miles from the airport. Start on EEG Boulevard and just follow that. Salt Pier is about halfway. Just before Margate Bay, the road narrows to a single lane, so watch out for traffic coming from the other direction and use the shoulders when necessary. The first landmark you will see is the Overseer's House. You can take the dirt road, but staying on the paved road is a bit kinder to your vehicle. Pro tip! Maps.me is an excellent free offline GPS map. Notice we're getting real-time driving directions to Red Slave while in airplane mode. Our preferred path is to continue to the slave huts and go through the parking area. Although there is plenty of room right there, circle back through the northern huts and park near the shore. That will put you right in front of the entry markers. 
Also, note that Red Slave can be quite popular. The seven vehicles in the middle here brought more than 25 divers. Plus, there were a few smaller groups and our tandem. There is nothing here to support your gear, so setting up is best done at your vehicle. The sun is relentless here, so a windshield sunshade and sunscreen will make your life a little more comfortable. We've started to show the closest dive shops in our videos this year, but you should be warned that Red Slave is not really close to any. Still, beyond the corals, Dive Friends and Flamingo Diving are 7 to 8 miles north if you need equipment support. The formal entry is easy to spot, not only because there are yellow rocks pointing the way, but there is also a well-worn rock and dirt path leading toward the shore. We have seen people enter just north of there as well. In either case, almost immediately upon entering the water, the bottom becomes a mix of loose rocks followed by an uneven rocky shelf that has some holes in it. Waves not only stir up sand, making it hard to see where you're stepping, but can also make balance difficult. Go slow, walk methodically, and work with your buddy in case either of you need assistance. The rocky shelf extends 50 to 75 feet in places, until it gets deep enough to don your fins. Once in the water, it's less than a 5 minute swim to the reef. Fish like a good current, so that means quite a few fishing boats around the reef as well. We talk about being mindful near the surface in every shore diving video, and typically show actual footage of surface traffic from each dive site. But be aware that fishing from shore is allowed and presents another potential hazard. We don't see it that often, but stay alert. Straight out from the entrance, the reef is 240 degrees southwest and 60 degrees northeast to return to shore. That said, navigation can be tricky here because the compass heading to shore can change drastically depending on how far around the tip of the island you go. So here are a few other things you can use to navigate underwater. From the dive site marker buoy, the entrance is at 20 degrees northeast. And this tire sits at the near side edge of the sandy shallows, in 10 feet of water, straight out from the entrance. The reef topology here is quite varied. A loop to the south will have a bit more reef, with lots of gorgonians feasting on nutrients and microorganisms, drifting with the current around the tip of the island. However, the sandy shallows start to give way and end the further south you go. Diving to the north has fewer gorgonians, but much wider sandy shallows where rays might be hanging out. There are also a few sand chutes that penetrate the reef to some depth. The drop-off varies between 25 and 35 feet, depending on where you hit it. The reef itself goes well beyond recreational limits, but if you want to see what it looks like down to 100 feet, here you go. Due to Red Slave's location, the currents can be quite strong at times, which can also impact visibility. Check out the amount and speed of the particulate in the water during one of our night dives. Also, all those rolling waves constantly coming in mean the surge can get quite intense close to shore. This real-time footage shows the water changing direction about every three seconds. We have over a minute of this, but you get the picture. 
Always remember, if you ever feel uneasy, uncomfortable, or unsafe, you can always abort the dive. That said, there are plenty of times when the dive is relaxing and the spectacular sea life is on full display. Perhaps it's the site's location, but there are so many interesting animals here. We found a sizable squad of squid in the shallows, one of which seemed particularly friendly. There were turtles, spotted eagle rays, a southern stingray, and even a free-swimming green moray eel. Now, let's talk schools. Blue parrotfish are pretty unique by themselves, so seeing a small school grazing in the shallows was extraordinary. We also saw a small school of smooth trunkfish, which is really uncommon. There was a large school of palamettas that let us get close, a few southern senates, sergeant majors, smallmouth grunts, blue tang, yellowtail snapper, creole rast, and the obligatory yellow goatfish grazing in the shallows. Speaking of the shallows, regular viewers know that we talk about them in every video. But the yin and yang of day and night diving here provides one of the starkest transformations we've seen at a dive site. By day, the vast rippled sandy shallows are home to hundreds of rosy razorfish. At night, however, the sandy shallows are transformed into fields of tube-dwelling anemone. Some are especially colorful. There's also a whole bunch of Elkhorn coral in about 10 to 15 feet of water south of the slave huts. Now, even with all this, if you think we've run out of things to show you in the sea life section, think again. While every dive at Red Slave is a treat, one of the highlights were definitely a couple of long-snout seahorses. Mollusks don't necessarily excite everyone, but finding a Ulema shell was special. Unfortunately, it wasn't occupied, but it was still very pretty. This encrusting zoanthid was actually a first-time capture for us. It can overgrow more than 20 species of coral, and produces palytoxin, which can be poisonous to humans. Taking shelter from the current in the shallows was a cute juvenile queen triggerfish. We also saw this thing in the shallows. We're not exactly sure what it is, but if you know, tell us in the comment section below. Red Slave is definitely in our top three favorite dive sites on Bonaire. And to prove our point, here are even more awesome animals you might see during a day dive.
Night dives at Red Slave are just as exciting, as long as the weather, current, and visibility are nice. In fact, get ready for a number of uncommon banners, because we saw quite a few creatures we don't see too often. Dive guides often describe the fragile mucus bubble parrotfish create for protection at night. But to be honest, we don't see those very often. We did see one here though. Pretty cool. Near the drop-off, this very small juvenile arrow squid drifted with us in the current. Shortly after that, we caught this post-larval surgeonfish doing the same thing. Nothing wanted to fight the current that evening. On our way back to shore, we noticed this gold-spotted eel poking its head out in the sandy shallows. And then it started to slither out. We dove here several times at night, and saw a lot of fascinating animals. Here is just a sample of other things you might see under the lights at Red Slave. Well, you know, if the conditions are good. Enjoy! <laughs>